Welcome back to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classic. This is episode number 486 and double shot number 399. Two Avenger trades. First up, it's Avengers Unleashed Volume 1 King War 1, containing uh, the first six issues of this, vol of this uh, new volume. And according to the renumbering, these, these are issues 661 to 666. Now, this storyline was set up in the third to last issue of All in All Different Avengers. Basically, issue 13, the storyline was set up in. And, yeah, basically when this thing was, um... Yeah, it was like, okay, you set the storyline, and it's like, okay, you have Vision kidnapping a baby, and then this sets this up. Like, I was expecting a little bit more time, and this was, like, a little too quick. Yeah, this is storyline just came just like that. But, once again... We have the first villain for this new team to face off against is Kang, even though the previous year, actually it was about, yeah, like the previous year, we started off with Kang, again. I'm like, this is like the third time whenever you have a new Avengers book, a uh, new Avengers number one, and the first one they fight is Kang. They did the same thing in 2010, they did it again in 2015, and they did it once again in 2017, it's the third time this has happened. I mean, I love the character Kang, but why in the world do you have to start off with him for? There's plenty of other Avenger villains. Why start with him for? I don't really have any idea. But they had three other people on the team because Miles, the Miles Morales Spider Man, Miss Marvel, and Sam Alexander Nova quit the form of champions with a bunch of other characters, including like Vision Star Vivian, uh, on the show Hulk, and I believe the other one was um, Cyclops. Yeah, the team Cyclops. And to replace them, they, well, with Tony Stark, basically, with those three quitting and Tony Stark falling with a coma, we need new members. And they only add three people to replace four, which honestly makes no sense. They add the original Spider-Man, they add Nydia Pym, the, sec the third Wasp, and they add Hercules. First time he's been on Avengers team since 2010. It's been, like, at this point, because these came out just early this year, it's been... Actually, it was like late last year, so it had been six years, six years since um, Hercules has been on uh, Vendor Team. It's about freaking time he does. And I appreciate Wade for putting him on the team. And um, so they get a new base operation because after Civil War, because Tony Stark's in a coma, they can't use, and because of the conference kind of finances, they, they can't use uh, the, the hangar, the hangar they've been using since. I believe with the second arc of all new different Avengers, they've been using it for over a year because he's a coma, can't use it anymore. So where'd they go? Peter Parker offers the back building as a base operations, and it stays base operations. And then Secret Empire happens, and they can't use it anymore. So once again, they're looking for a base operations, and currently, apparently, it's been on hold because it's crossover with Champions. So I'm thinking, when in the world are they gonna get a new base operations? Seriously, how long do we have to wait? I mean, it's like we, we, we get the backs of the building, we get this cool base. It kind of feels, it's like Mark Wade is trying to uh, basically fill a little bit of this style, pretty much bringing elements, ideas from, uh, use similar ideas that Bendis used for his new Avengers, like like the Avengers based out of a tower. In the, well, that one was Stark, the original Stark Tower. This one is the backs of the building. And, and having the first five fullers be the preservers of base operations, like, like, like living quarters, stuff like that. It's a pretty interesting idea. And having a trophy room. That actually is something I don't remember actually that was used. The idea was used for the original Avengers Tower. But back to the building is a pretty neat idea. I mean, like the second superhero team who operate out of that place. Last thing with Fantastic Four. So, yeah, interesting idea. Um, but this is a pretty interesting storyline. But I'm kind of glad that back with this storyline, they're finally going to put Kang the rest for a while because they had just used it the previous year, so thank God after the storm, pretty much with the storyline over with, they uh they put him in the rest. Now the the writing here is done by Mark Wade, and the interior artwork is done by Mike Del Mundo, who is basically recently known for being the artist of Weird World. I believe he's also the first artist for all the different Avengers. So I'm a little surprised they brought him back for this. So yeah. Alex Ross sent us the covers, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, I should point this out, though. Issue 4 is a clear homage to uh, Avengers number 4. 
from the 60s. Yeah, this is a clear homage to that particular issue. Yeah, I appreciate the fact that Alex Ross did that. Mm. Excuse me, but this this is actually a pretty good storyline. Um, I'm going to get this a 9 out of 10. It's really, it's pretty good. Also, for some reason, I have no idea why, uh, Del Mundo, it's like he never drew Peter Parker before, and when you first see him, he looks so awkward. Yeah, this apparently is how Mike Diodato draws Peter Parker. Mike, 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 Mike Del Mundo, yeah. But that looks so freaking weird. I mean, wow. It's like this guy never drew him before, and yet... He draws the backgrounds really good. He draws the rest of the characters kind of fine. It's just that the way he draws Pierre Parker is so awkward. Though I kind of think that also apparently they, he loves showing off teeth. Yeah. Uh, I heard that um, Gary Frank basically loves doing this too. Yeah. He loves showing off this character's teeth a lot. Um, which is a little odd. There's a bit odd facial moments in here, but it's not too distracting. The only thing is distracting is basically how he draws Peter Parker. That's the only thing I draw. Points, but the story is still pretty good. I think the next volume is, uh, I think like the first couple, I think like the first like few issues are just tie-ins to, uh, are pretty much just a few standalone issues and we have tie-ins to Secret Empire. Alright, we next have, um, Uncanny Avengers Unity, Volume 4, Red Skull. Yep, and this contains issues uh, 28 to 23. This is the last trade that will collect issues from Gary Douglas Road because at 23, he leaves the book. And he takes Deadpool with him. Yep, of course, the ending kind of sets up Secret Empire. Yeah, that's basically where it is with this. Uh, the artwork. Uh, Kevin Labarda, this is 1821. Pepe Larez, this is 1920. And 22-23 with uh, Rodrigo Zare, that's issue 19. The cover art is done by Steve, on the first issue in here, is done by Steve McNevin and David Krell. Uh, David, Steve McNevin also has issue 19 with Jay Liston and David Krell. Adam Kuber and David White does issue 20. Adam Kuber and Paul Martz does issue 21. Dave Marquez and, and Martia Garcia does 22, and Ryan Stegman and Jesus, um, Jesus Averroff does issue 23. This storyline, which by far is really good, and this is kind of like a partial homage to a classic Avengers cover. I don't remember which one, though. I think it, I think it might have been something to do with, I think it might have been, uh, might have been Atlantis Attacks. Yeah, it's a very similar cover. This particular storyline does something that no other writer, apparently, Marvel apparently can do, uh, Tie ups from the Rick Mender started with the whole thing with the Red Skull. So, a friend of mine, Jeremy Ruffa, basically said that Gary Douglas should get a medal for actually uh, following up with, with the Red Skull because apparently no one else in Marvel even bothered to do anything with him. And now he's back, and uh, this storyline basically wraps up pretty much, it wraps up two storylines. Yeah, first one it wraps up. It's the whole thing with the Red Skull with Charles Xavier's brain in his head. Yeah, this storyline had a left hanging. Because uh, this was very recently. Um, this is before Sacred Empire. Uh, they finally wrapped this up after, I think it was, a little over two years of this storyline hanging up. What the heck happened to him? And now finally, finally after two years, we finally resolved the, this. And... Uh, they remove Charles Xavier's brain from Red Skull's head, and of course, brain gets destroyed because apparently Steve Rogers, of course, this is a uh, Hydra Cap, thinks it's a weapon of mass destruction because it's a telepath brain, though it's brainwashed Cap, though this is later be an imposter. Yeah. Um, and then the final issue is just resolving something that happened, kind of also what uh, happened something prior to Access with the whole thing of, of uh, Wonder Man being Rogue's head. Yeah, this is something that's never been brought up since the end of Rick Remender's run. Uh, I would say this the last time it was brought this up was back in, I think it was issue 22 of, of the first volume. So, it actually had been like a, like exactly like almost three years since anybody has anything with that particular thing. So, we get Wonder Man out of uh, Rogue's head, and he's technically back on the team. The team is sort of set, sort of disbanded. But they're still active as a team. 
Though I still think disbanding them in, in book basically was stupid. Um, but as far as I can tell, they're, they're still active as a group. Despite Steve disbanding during Civil War 2. Yep. But despite that, this is a really good storyline. Um, I love the fact 23, uh, 22 kind of basically concludes the, the storyline for Red Skull. 23 does an epilogue issue to pretty much Gary Duggan's run. But I give this book a 9 out of 10. It's, it's actually pretty good. Um, uh, Cable is off the team, too. Yeah, both Cable and Deadpool are both off the team. Because, as far as I know, I don't think Cable is on the team anymore. But... Uh, I think uh, I think Beast is going to be joining the team later on, so, but this is good. And, of course, Sargata West just, just came back to the team after three years, so 9 out of 10. So uh, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be episode uh, 487 and double number 400. And the next episode will be two Spider-Man trades. Okay? We'll see you on the next episode. Bye.